You can't talk to children like you used to. Yeah. They're all looking at you as if, don't you talk to my child? That's sad, isn't it? I found that sad. And that's partly And what... you can't give them a sweetie. Yeah. And now I've been vetted to be in there. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm finding, oh my God, what's happening? And I think part of that is what the Generations Project well, is trying to do. That's is... right. That's correct. That's correct. I'm happy it's going on. But you wonder why you, you have to do them sort of yeah. things, don't you? I do. Yeah. Well, I've been coming in and out of this library since 1967. With two toddlers. And they were always led to the children's section where we used to browse a long time. And then I'd take them down here. They never wanted to come down here. Because this is a boring section to them. And then I'd pick up, depending what I want, what I had time, because I never had a lot of time, what I had time to read, I'd have a look perhaps what paperbacks had been left. Because probably they're new up to date. Right. And uh, I'd have a look, a glance, and I'd see if there was anything that I would fancy reading that night in work. Because I worked nights at Classerbridge. And if I got a chance and you sat in the office, you would read and knit at the same time. Knitting, reading and working all at once, but you had the time to do it, you know. A couple of hours during the night when everybody was asleep and quiet, you checked your wards, then you went back to your desk knitting. So in terms of the library, Shirley, why, why has it been important to you and your family, do you think? I think we all enjoy books, we all enjoy reading. Charles Dickens, it's Charles Dickens, yeah. Doris, I've read this many a time. I'll overread a book if I enjoy it. And I know there's lots of films and things being made of it, and but there's nothing like getting hold of the book and really reading it, I think. I think it's sad that all the writing is quite small. It doesn't encourage elderly to pick up that. They'd look at the... Yeah. Wait, you know, and they'd have to put the reading glasses on to read it. But it is a good story, and I like Dickens. I've always liked Dickens anyway. Yeah. But I've just noticed World War II in a children's book. Now, I can remember that very clear. And this is for a children's edition. See? I was actually amongst that, the Blitz. Mm. I was in the Liverpool Blitz, yeah. And my mum had a, a new baby during the Blitz and they bombed the hospital. And she was taken out by coach to Blackpool to have my sister. And when she come back, we used to call my sister the Black Pudding because she was born in Blackpool. Our playtime was usually at lunch because you had two hours. I used to go on right now. But a lot of our um, time, I mean, all right. We made mud pies and we used to have to put them on the end of cabbages and all that and put them out because they had their own business and they worked for themselves. And everything was very primitive then, wasn't it? Mm. And, uh, you know, I mean, we hay made. We picked the potatoes, all that sort of thing. I mean, I could ride a horse at uh, barebacks <laughs> at nine, ten years old, you know. That sort of thing. I mean, I was all of 11 when my dad came to me one day. We were out in the milk round and he couldn't find the van. And it was what is known now as, um, was around Jericho, where the horses land. Right. And the uh, hospital was at the top and I remember putting a nose bag on the horse and taking my dad in and just shouting, my daddy's eyes are bleeding. They went home and said to mum, we left him in the hospital because they put test tubes on his eyes with worms in them. But what they put in was, um, what do you call them, that suck the blood? Oh, the leeches. Leeches. Oh, really? Yes, that's what they did it in those days. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, looking back, it didn't hurt us. It didn't hurt all the little jobs you had to do didn't look at it at work and while he was in hospital I was taken out of school and I did his meal rounds and everything at 11 years of age. Couldn't do that today. 
handling money, fruit and vegetables, homemade butter, mm -hmm. pick the eggs up. Yeah, it's such a different life. Because yeah. if we wanted any, I mean, most of our clothes were always made. Well, come home from school, go down and see Miss Richards and she'd measure you up for a new coat or whatever, you know. But, um, and she used to say sometimes, go and put so-and-so on and sit there nice. And then she'd say, Dad, look at her rags. She wants more money for <laughs> to get something else. Do you know what I mean? Because that was his... As he said, if you were well fed, and you know, it didn't matter about the others, they could be darned, things like that. But uh, of course, mum was different, wasn't she? <laughs>